Well, week three is finally here. So did I pass. What's going on YouTube? It's going to be um, the week three video for the rail GYCDL program and um, it was a fun fast week so um, good bit of little stuff I want to cover over this week. I also filmed two other little things I'm going to add in to the end of this. Actually no I might add it in between the videos. Um, it's just uh, some extra little stuff. But uh, this was this was the week. This was uh, finding out if you know I could actually pass the the CDL exam. So um, this week started off with a uh, the holiday Labor Day. So we were actually off Monday. So I got to spend more time with the family last week, which is always good. And uh, I didn't have to go back up to Connolly uh, until Tuesday. Uh, so Tuesday. Paul, my instructor, he took us to uh, to a um, I think it was a Loves. I'm not sure. About 90 miles away from the the terminal, um, he took us up there, and he let us uh, back and everything in an actual truck stop. So we actually got to practice backing into a. It was it was kind of empty like i mean there was a, a couple of trucks um so it wasn't like packed so we didn't get to like you know do a uh, really full parking lot backing but we got to practice backing an actual truck stop parking lot so that was pretty fun we ate food up there and talked and you know shot the shit and everything so that was fun we drove back we got back in the afternoon after lunch so uh for the last couple of hours we just practiced uh some more backing on the range and everything. Wednesday, um, he just kind of, Paul just kind of went over everything, like what Thursday's going to entail, because Thursday was the actual day we took our CDL, because we're flat betters, so um, flat betters do it on Thursday and drive in, do it on Friday. So uh, Wednesday, he was just kind of going over uh, everything that's going to happen the next day. He put us on the simulator for, we only got to do one little uh, thing a piece on the simulator. It wasn't, you know, if people are worried about simulation, simulators and stuff, you don't really do them, at least in Connolly. That was the only time we did them and we did it once and uh, I didn't really care for it, but to each their own. <clears throat> um, we didn't really drive her back much that day. He was just kind of going over everything. Um, what was going to happen the next day and we actually went home early that day we went home at 1 30 because we actually had to be back at the terminal at 2 30 in the morning on thursday so we, they sent us home early so we can get some more sleep and everything get plenty of sleep and then uh thursday i woke up at 1 1 30 in the morning got ready got to the terminal a little after two uh, I helped Paul pre-trip the truck. We did an actual pre-trip. Like, we didn't do, like, you know, the test pre-trip. We did an actual pre-trip since we were going to be driving the truck two and a half hours to Chattanooga. Um, so I helped Paul pre-trip the truck. Did an air and leaks test, all that and everything. Everything was fine. We didn't see anything wrong with it. We got everything ready. We hit the road about 245. I drove up there. So I got two and a half hours of drive time. Um... In the morning when it's you know, night not a lot of cars on the road so that was you know decent experience and everything we stopped at one truck stop on the way just a little pit stop you know grab some coffee and stuff like that <clears throat> got to uh, Chattanooga got to the exam place right before 6 it was like 550 in the morning we got to practice a little bit because nobody was there and they leave the little range field open so we drive up there Paul was showing us, you know, their range setup, which was very similar to ours, um, the, the, the way the cones and everything are set up. And uh, we got to practice two, three times, you know. We could have practiced a little bit more, but we didn't want to get burnt out on it and everything. So uh, we, we were back at really good. Me and, me and my uh, the other guy that was uh, flatbedding, 
um i mean we were we were getting the backs down we were doing them perfect so we we're like hey we're good we don't want to keep doing it and get it you know burn out on everything so from about 6 to 7 30 we were doing that and uh then we went over to the building you know we were talking to the guy who was going to do our test he was going over everything with us he told me i was going to go first and uh at eight o'clock that's when i went for the uh the test uh went over there he explained how the test you know how, how everything is and the guy who does the test it, they call him sarge but uh he's he 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 does it with miller mont and he's like an instructor through there or whatever so he's an instructor at heart so he he really like it helps break it down how the test is going to go and he, he even tells you no it's just like what you've been practicing and everything okay don't be nervous and all that so he really calms you down and you know he he knows you're nervous and he just talks to you and calms you down he's a really cool old guy um we get out there he has a little tablet the t once he presses i guess confirm start or whatever it tells him which form of the pretest uh i was gonna do i got form c which was the trailer portion of the pretest or pre-trip so i had to do the trailer the coupling everybody has to do the coupling no matter which form they get you have to do the coupling so the trailer coupling and then i have i had to do uh, you have to do the in everybody has to do the end cab and then the uh leaks and brake didn't miss nothing got perfect on that after the pre-trip everything's good you pass you move on to the backing um first back you do is the straight back easy simple didn't mess up got that then you do the offset back again did the offset easy simple then you do the third and final back which is the the 90 or the 90 degree or the alley dock um and you know how i said earlier me and my my other the other guy we were doing the backs perfect all morning long just nailing them damn alley dock that damn Fuck that alley dock. It screwed me from my perfect score. Well, I came in too loose on on the alley dock, and um, it's always when you get there, the instructors will tell you it's better to come in too tight than too loose. They'll explain it. Too tight means you're coming in more on the the driver side, but this is the side you can see. When you're coming in too loose, it's when you're coming in on the other side that you can't see. Um, so it's always better to come in too tight and. I came in too loose and had to do a couple more pull-ups than what I wanted to to fix it. I went out of bounds once to on, to fix it on one of the pull-ups, so out of bounds once and an extra pull-up, so cost me cost me points at damn alley dock. <sighs> but whatever, I you get 12 points for this for, for all the backs total, so straight out uh, offset and alley dock get 12 points not each 12 points total uh an extra pull up costs one point and out of bounds or hit the cones is two points uh so i use zero points on the straight and uh offset so i had full 12 points on the alley dock so if you if you get zero on the straight and offset it's really hard to fail that alley dock you got to really screw it up to to fail that alley dock so i'm just irritated they didn't get a perfect score I, I was i was pretty uh pretty butthurt on about myself uh like i said i'm my my biggest critic so but uh i passed the backing so then he gets in and we go for a drive drives 45 minutes to an hour long uh he takes you around certain routes certain turns and everything and tell you to change lanes he'll tell you when to turn he just wants to see how you drive and everything like that he'll be talking to you the whole time he loves to talk he does it one to like you know keep your nerves down and everything but two he also does see how well you're driving while someone's talking to you you know don't get too distracted see so he likes to see how well you can pay attention and, and drive while he's talking um don't go over the speed limit his little tablet has GPS in it and it knows the speed limits and if you even go one mile over there's a point right there so don't speed and you know just just drive like you've been driving with your instructors 
The only thing with the driving is if you hit a curb when you're going around a corner, if you hit a curb, it's an automatic fail. So pay, when you're going around curves, pay attention to your trailer and your, in your mirrors. Make sure you're out wide enough before you start turning back because if you hit the curb, it's an automatic fail. But other than, the drive, other than that, the drive's easy. I mean, the, the whole thing's easy. I, I don't want it to sound stressful or anything. It, it, it's not too bad. Um, and it was it was over pretty quick. Um, so I got back, I passed, and then uh, the other flat better guy he went, he passed. Uh, he the alley doc messed him up too. We were both kind of butt hurt on that alley doc man. Um, but so we both passed. We had to do some paperwork and everything like that. And then uh, the other guy drove back. Drove back since I drove up there. He drove back, which is good to me because I was tired and I didn't want to hit the traffic and all that. That's why I wanted to drive up there with no traffic. Yes, yeah, night, but whatever, no traffic. So drove back, <clears throat> got back, had us do a couple more paperwork, and then we went home, passed out. And then. So the reason why flatbedders have to go a day before is because flatbedders have to take an extra class that drive van don't. So on Friday when we came back, we had to take a securement class. All it's just a brief overview of all the different types of loads and like different how you sorry how you secure like a bunch of different types of loads. They know that one class is not gonna make you a securement master it's going to be hands-on experience when you're out there with your trainer and everything that we're, you're really going to learn but they have to give you that class and kind of go over the general uh knowledge of securement so flatbedders have to do that you also uh later in the day on friday they have a little zoom meeting with uh, uh one of the fleet managers and he pretty much has a zoom meeting with all the different terminals of all the different people and uh Sorry, something on my phone. And uh, pretty much the the fleet manager is going to go over with everybody uh, their expectations for phase two. They're going to tell you what um, what's going to be happening in the upcoming phase, what they need you to do now, everything like that. Um, and like when you're actual, when you'll be assigned a fleet manager and when that fleet manager will contact you and all of that. They're supposed to call us Monday. Today's Saturday right now, so <clears throat> gonna hear from my fleet manager on Monday, and then I'm gonna try to go get my CDL. I'm in Georgia, so the DMVs they're closed on Mondays, so I'm gonna try to get my CDL on Tuesday, but it, it might be Wednesday when I'm gonna be able to get it. Um, and then Saturday, I don't know if I mentioned before, but you have to go to Saturday classes. They're half days from seven to eleven thirty. It's just a half day class, um, but you have to do it, and then. You're free to go. You're just waiting for the following week, waiting for them to contact you and see what see what it goes from there. But week three was uh went by fast and it was good. Sucks uh, I'm not gonna see a lot of those probably not gonna see a lot of those people again, but uh a lot of those guys were really good guys. Good group of guys. I got all their numbers, you know, stay in contact with them. Uh Paul was a really good instructor. If you go to Connolly and you get Paul Bath, Bath, always pronounce his last name wrong. Paul Bath or Bath. Paul. If you get Paul, <laughs> uh, you'll know it's Paul. Huge Falcons fan. Uh, so, and he doesn't. He likes to talk. So you you know if you got Paul. Uh, he's a really good instructor. Really good guy. Um, he, he'll he'll do you good. Um, well, you only get him if you're flatbed. So. Um, but yeah, week three was was a blast, and the test is a uh, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, so now I'm just I'm just waiting to hear from the fleet manager and uh, get everything ready and hit hit the road with my driver trainer and hopefully hopefully I got a good driver trainer man. I uh, I really want to get along with him because I really don't want to have to switch and and go through all that. Uh, I just want a good driver trainer that will, you know, correct me when I fuck up and and treat me with respect and, you know, all that kind of stuff. You know, they they ask you during the little Zoom meeting, they ask you if you smoke, vape, or, or chew tobacco or anything like that. And then they'll ask you if you don't, 
mind having a driver trainer who does the opposite of you. So if you do smoke, they'll be like, well, do you mind if you have a driver trainer who doesn't? And then I don't smoke or any of that. So that, you know, I said, I said, no, I don't smoke. And I, I don't care if my driver trainer smokes. I mean, you know, I, I highly doubt he's going to be sitting there smoking nonstop and the smoke's just going to, you know, kill me or anything. But, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say no to that and then pass up the opportunity to have a real good trainer just because he smokes. So uh, I don't really, I don't really care. Now, obviously, if they just smoking 24-7 and blowing smoke in my face, might have a little issue. But other than that, I don't care. I, I just won't really want to get a good trainer. Um, I think they told me, uh, I think they'll ask you, but I think they mainly just ask the females. I, I'm not exactly sure on this. I have heard that male and females can be trainer and trainees together. Um... I, I'm not too sure about that. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I've heard it going around and everything, so I, I'm not sure. So don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah. So um, I recorded two videos during this week. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put at the end of this video. It's just uh, me going over the outside and inside pre-trip but it's just me going over the components i'm i'm not doing the pre-trip i'm not doing the verbiage what you say and everything like that i'm not i'm not doing any of that i'm just kind of showing you a quick like hey this is all the components that's on the outside of the pre-trip like on the engine hey you got the air filter turbo you know all the hoses electrical components the reservoirs the oil all that on the trailer the coupling um, what they're called, like kind of point at them maybe or just show you what they are. I'm just going over the components. I'm not actually doing the pre-trip. So don't, you know, don't look at that and think I'm actually doing a pre-trip. I'm not. Um, the reason I'm not, it's kind of like what my instructor said, is people watch these videos and they'll try to, you know, learn the pre-trip from the people who do the videos. Well, if you go to a different place than I do, they might have different requirements or they may have different verbiage or, or something like that. So I don't want to do a pre-trip video and, and you watch mine and study for me. And then where you go is something completely different, but you're so used to saying this cause you watch me now that, you know, you have a hard time transitioning. So I'm not going to do the pre-trip wherever you go. They'll teach you the correct things to say, the correct verbiage and all that. I'm just showing you like components that's going to be on it. Again, I'm in Connolly, Georgia. We test in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So everywhere is different. Um, there could be extra. I'm pretty sure all the components is the DOT specified components. So every, like all the components should be the same on everybody's pre-trip because it comes down from the DOT. That's federal. Um, but again, I just want to say in, in Georgia, testing in Tennessee. So I'm just going to go over the components uh, for the outside of the truck and the inside of the truck. And, uh, yeah, so I'll uh, I'll post the video. I'll try to do it again next weekend. Um, might be a quick one. It's just pretty much probably just, uh, you know, I probably will actually, I probably won't post one until actually get the trainer and everything um and because it's his truck and i'm packing lightly i don't know if i'll be able to bring my laptop and my little wi-fi device so um if you don't see a video from me in the next week or two i'm probably just gonna be uh do one big video at the end of phase two when i'm actually off my trainer's truck because again i don't want to pack a lot of stuff it's a confined space he it's his truck. I want to treat him with respect and not take up a lot of his space. And I'm gonna have I'm gonna be focusing on learning. That I mean, I'm probably not gonna have a lot of time to make videos and everything. So um, after this video, it might be a few weeks until I post a new one. Uh, but I definitely will post one when I'm done with the trainer and tell you like what phase two was about. I'll definitely do that. And then after phase two. 
I'll once I get my truck and everything and I'm on my own I'll post regular updates just uh, telling you what the life of the truck is kind of like but uh, I'm about to put those videos up and uh, I'll see y'all when I see y'all hey what's going on guys I figured I'd do a quick I'm not gonna do like an actual pre-trip I'm just gonna show, show you the components and all the components that, that go in that you're looking at and going into a pre-trip so I'm just gonna run it down real quick um, just to kind of give you a, a general idea of how much stuff you're looking at when you're doing these pre-trips um, pretend that hood isn't open right now but you'd be looking at the front of the truck checking for any damage or anything looking underneath the truck for any like fluids and leaks checking out the headlights and the clearance lights up there you know just making sure everything looks good and nothing looks out of whack and stuff like that when you come to the engine compartment on the right side the passenger side and this is for this model truck uh, different trucks are obviously components are gonna be in different spots and everything but this is for the Cascadia Freightliner um, and for this year model which is training truck I think it's like 2016 or 17 but anyways so the first thing we're looking at is the the elect the the hoses and the electrical lines and everything make sure they're not you know fucked up or anything like that or leaking or anything uh, you got the air filter that's on the pre-trip inspection you got the turbo that's on the pre-trip inspection the alternator right there as well as the the belt that drives it is on the pre-trip anything that contains like fluid and stuff like that that's the washer window washer fluid you got the whole frame shock absorbers u-bolts the leaf springs brake brake hose brake chamber slack adjuster push rod the tie rod and the you can't really see because it's dark it's kind of morning but the right the tie rod and the uh, lower steering arm you got that on there um, I can't really show you the inside of the tire, but you got the brake drum, you got the brake lining, and you got the axle seal. I can't really, it's too dark, I can't really show you. And then on the outside of the tire, you, you got to mention the grooves, what the tread depth is on them, the air pressure of the tire, how you check that, the rim obviously, the lug nuts, and also the hub oil seal. And that's pretty much the gist of this side for the Freightliner. Um, and then again, this is just like a quick overview. Like, obviously, you'd be going looking more in depth and everything while you're doing yours. Then on this side, again, you're gonna look at the hoses, all the electrical connections, everything. Make sure nothing looks fucked up. You're gonna look at all your liquid stuff. Check the fluid. Make sure it's between the min and max. Make sure it's not leaking. That goes for the coolant, the power steering fluid. You could also check the oil. I'm sure most of y'all know how to check oil, remove the dipstick, wipe it off, put it in, check the level. And that's where you would fill the oil if need be. Um, you got the water pump right here. And back there, it's too dark, you can't see, but you got the air compressor and also the steering pump. Um, you can't really see them. You got the steering shaft, you got the steering box. And again, it's going to be dark, but you have the pitman arm, the drag link, which is connected to the, you can't really see it, but it's right there, connected to the upper steering arm, lower steering arm, and tie rod, you got all that on there. And the brakes and the tires the same as it was on that side. Brake hose, brake chamber, brake drum, brake line in, slack adjuster push rod, all that. It's all the same. Alright, so that's that side. And then you're coming to the side of the, hold on let me get this in focus for you coming into the side of the door I got a truck right here that's trying to hold on just trying to get a trailer coming to the side of the door seeing if there's any kind of uh, damage or anything like that you're looking at the the side light right here door door handle door latch door hinge door seal every like everything that goes into the door component the stairs obviously 
battery box, def tank, the fuel tank, and the fuel tank's uh, straps and rubber spacers. Looking at the back of the cab, the little reflective lights, then you got the support hanger for the air and electrical lines. Obviously, you got to mention the air and electrical lines, the connection at the trailer, as well as the cab, shock absorbers, uh, then airbags, and that's the main stuff you'll, you'll mention, like on the rear of the cab. You got to mention the air tank. And there's on that side you can't see but on that side there's a, the exhaust you got to mention you got to mention the catwalk um, you're not really gonna be, be able to see under here but you got the frame the drop primary and secondary drive shaft you got more air and electrical lines you got the, the torsion bars you got all that that you got to mention that's in the frame I can't really show you um, just because obviously it's connected to the trailer it's too dark but that all goes to the frame tires most of it's the same the difference between these tires is obviously you got to mention the gap that's clear and free of debris the tread depth on these have to be at least two thirty seconds not four thirty seconds like those so you got to mention the difference um and the slack adjuster and push rod in these tires are the same as up there except you also got to mention the difference when the brakes are applied no less than 90 degree angle uh, that's the only difference between these slack adjuster and push rods and those Everything else on the tires are the same, obviously. Hub oil seals, uh, brake drum, brake lining, axle seals, um, rims and lug nuts, all that's the same. In, uh, in the frame, you got the springs, leaf, uh, leaf springs, leaf mount, U-bolts, shock absorbers, airbags, all that's the same. So I'm not really gonna you know, stay on that too long. You got the rear lights back here. You got to mention the brake lights, reverse light, and the reflectors. You got to mention the mud flap and that reflective tape. And then you got to mention the trailer apron, the fifth wheel, the fifth wheel skid plate, the fifth wheel release arm, the fifth wheel mounting bolts. And you can't see it from here, but you know, the kingpin that's attached to the, you know, that's what makes the the fifth wheel and the trailer connect the kingpin and the locking jaw you got to mention all that um, um, that's all part of <clears throat> the, the coupling mechanism you got to look at the front of the trailer make sure everything's good side of the trailer you got to look at all that don't miss the little you can't really see it right here the little clearance light that's right there don't miss that. You got to mention that too. Uh, reflective tape. You got to mention that. The two side indicators. You got to mention those. The landing gear, landing gear pads, and the uh, handle. You got to mention all that. Coming down the side. You have the air and electrical lines and the support hanger. You got to mention. You got the tandem release lever and the the pin you can't really see in here so but you got to mention those two uh control and torque arm um that's under there you got to mention these tires are the same exact as those tires so you know everything that you've mentioned for tires applies to these um you got an air tank back here that you got to mention and again as well as like all the the brake assembly and the the, the springs and mounts and all that's the you know that you've already mentioned previously but you, it's also back here as well again i'm just trying to go through this fast i'm not trying to like actually do a pre-trip right now I'm just trying to go through it real quick to show you like all the stuff that's on there you got the tie down hook the abs light the rear marker light then come to the back of the trailer you got the three clearance lights up there you got the reflective tape that goes around the trailers you got the trailer door and hinges the door handles the door latches the tie down uh, these little things and the door seals you got to mention all that you gotta well we can't open this because it's locked but 
if you were able to unlock these doors, you got to mention the roof, side walls, deck and floor, all that. Uh, you got to mention the brake lights and indicator lights. You got to mention the license plate light. And you got to mention the, the bumper bar and the reflector tape on the bumper bar. Now, that was... And then, obviously, you go down the right side, but it's, it's the same as the left side. Um, you've already mentioned everything. Now, that was really quick, and I was just showing you all the components that's in the pre-trip for our test and just like the stuff you'll look for when you're actually doing a pre-trip um, actually when when you're actually doing a pre-trip you're obviously going to go into gr much greater detail you're going to be mentioning things you're looking for you're, and when you're doing the pre-trip you're actually going to be looking for them you know don't don't just uh, go through this like a robot and uh to pass the test and then not actually look for these things like they're teaching you this, yes, to pass the test, but they're also teaching you it so when you're actually doing your pre-trip, you know what to look for. Like, um, just for an instance, like, say the shock absorbers here. When you would say it on the test, you know, you'd be like, shock absorbers properly mounted, not damaged, not leaking. You would tell the instructor, indication of a leak could be like wetness built up on the bottom. Well, you're telling him that because he needs to hear the verbiage, but there, you're also telling yourself that hey when I do this pre-trip if I see wetness built up and it hasn't been raining and it looks like something's leaking right there uh, clue that would be a clue that hey maybe my damn shock absorber is uh, is leaking and I might want to get that checked out I might want to get that fixed so you know when you're actually doing this pre-trip actually look for this shit don't just go through a robot mode to pass a test because if any of this shit fails while you're out on the road and you're supposed to do your pre-trip and then they find out you didn't do the pre-trip or you didn't really pay attention while you're doing it i mean that's your ass on the line not mine so um but yeah that's that's most of the components at least for us in georgia like i said we'll be testing in chattanooga and so that's what all of the components that uh is on our pre-trip inspection checklist uh I think it's stupid that they don't have some things on there, you know, like the radiator and all that's not even on there. And like, there's some components on there you think that would be on the DOT little um, priority list, but are not. So, but uh, that's the outside. Uh, in a little bit, I'll get inside and do a quick little in cab. I just go over all the components of the in cab. In cab's much shorter. All right. Hey, what's going on? All right, uh, I did the outside pre-trip for you. Well, I didn't do the pre-trip. I just went over the components that's on the pre-trip. So, um, you know, I just listed everything that's going to be on ours, which is, I'm sure it's the same everywhere because it's a, it's a DOT, like what they want you to be pre-tripping. So I'm sure it's the same everywhere. But again, just stressing, I'm in Connolly, Georgia, so... You know, if you go somewhere different, you know, I don't want there to be any kind of differences. You'd be like, oh, you said this and everything. I'm just giving you a quick what's on ours. Well, we go over all the components we go over and everything. So when you do the outside, you're going to come do the end cap. Again, I'm just going to list the components. I'm not going to go over the verbiage. I'm not going to go over what you say. I'm not really going to go over what you're looking for. I'm just going to go over the components. When you get here, your instructor's will show you the pre-trip they'll show you the whole thing they'll show you what you're looking for they'll show you what to say they'll show you all that i'm just going to go over the components so in the end cap it's a lot quicker there's a lot less stuff you, uh, you got to look for than when you're on the outside um first thing you mentioned obviously right here what everybody should be putting on before they drive seat belt you got to mention this um i like to keep my stuff like I'm starting with the safety belt I like to keep all the other safety things and go ahead and mention them so you'd mention the safety belt you'd mention your your um, your fire extinguisher and your reflective triangles back there uh, and also spare fuses if you, if you, you got any in the truck um, so you'd all go ahead and mention all that and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this camera then you can do a safe start you'd mention the ABS light you got to mention that it came on and went off all right. Um, you got to mention the mirrors. You got to mention the windshield. You got to mention the windshield wipers. Okay, so that's easy ones. 
you go ahead and get before you get started and everything else. Uh, all, you also got to mention the wiper fluid with the wipers. Um, come down to the gauge cluster. Um, you got to mention each gauge. So you got to mention the oil pressure gauge, the water water temp gauge. You got to mention the speedometer. You got to mention the fuel tank and the def tank. And you got to mention primary, secondary, air pressure, and you got to mention the voltmeter. Our voltmeter's on here. You can't see it because it's saying transmission air. It's got to build up air pressure. Um, but there would be a voltmeter right there where the odometer is, right underneath it. But you got so you got to mention all those. Um, you got to mention city horn and air horn. You got to mention the gear selector. Um, you got to do a steering wheel free play test to make sure your steering wheel doesn't have an excess amount of uh, free play in it. You got to mention all your indicator lights, so left, right, uh, you know, high beam, and hazard light indicators. Okay, yeah, there's the it built up air pressure. There's the voltmeter, so you got to mention that. Um, yeah, all the indicators. Um, and then the last two things you mentioned is you gotta check to see if your defrost is working properly because you don't wanna get out there where you can't defrost your windows. And you also gotta make sure your floor heat's working properly. And that's the last two on the end cap. And, and see, it's a lot quicker. Um, 50, 60% of all your stuff you're gonna mention is right here, including the indicators and everything that you gotta mention. But everything is like right here mainly. Um, just don't forget the other stuff like the mirrors, the windshield, windshield wipers, fluids, uh, the gear selector. A lot of people miss this because they're not they're not paying attention to it. Like you got to mention the gear selector. This is the Cascadia Freightliner. I think the International is like a down here. It's like buttons and stuff. But you got to mention the gear selector. A lot of people miss that for some reason. Uh, they're just not paying attention because it's kind of tucked out of the way. And don't forget your horns. You got to mention both horns, air horn and city horn. Uh, yeah, and so that that's the end cap. Now after you get done, hold on, let me. Now after you get done with the end cap, you would go into the. Sorry, I'm trying to set this up. It's not really good propping position for my phone. After you mention the end cap, or after you do the end cap, you'd go into um, the leak and break test. Um, I'm not going to do them right now because I have somebody out there that's, uh, he's looking around the trailer and everything, so I'm not going to move the trailer or, or do anything, but, so in the leak and, and, and brake test, first one you do is the static leak test, and again, this is for ours, okay, I don't know if there's a specific, specific order for where you'll be going, but Connolly here, the first test you do is the static leak test, that's where you just... You disengage the parking brakes and you wait for the gauges to settle and you, you in a minute you should lose no more than three psi um, that's all the static leak test is after that you would do the applied leak test which is the same thing you just keep you keep parking brakes disengaged but you you hold your foot on the brake pedal <coughs> on the service brake you wait for the gauges to settle and then you count to a minute and you should loop I learned this from my truck video. That air is probably blasting uh, way too loud. So, anyways, after the static leak test, you would do the applied leak test where you put your foot on the service brake, wait for the gauges to settle, count to a minute, and unlike the static leak test where you couldn't lose more than three PSI, on the applied leak test, you can't lose more than four PSI in a minute. So those are the first two leak tests you do. After those leak tests, you do the uh, low air pressure warning. You're just gonna keep hitting the damn service brake, getting that air pressure to drop. Um, our trucks are built that the low air warning needs to come on at or before 55 PSI. I don't know what y'all's trucks will be, but you're just gonna hit that service brake until the low air pressure warning and alarm sound uh, comes on. And then, you know, you'll, you'll be, you, you know it works. After that one, you'll do the emergency spring brake test. 
some people call it the button pop test. Uh, basically, because your your park your emergency brakes, your parking brakes would still be in disengaged at this point. So, so you're gonna keep hitting that damn service brake, and ours is set up to between 20 and 40 psi. Anywhere in that range, the emergency brakes will pop out. They'll engage automatically. So, um, you'll just keep hitting the service brake until you fan off enough air pressure. Um, for the emergency brakes to pop out and that that'll test your emergency brakes um so that's that test so that's four you got two more the next one we do at this point you have to build up the air pressure you just lost you'd have to turn the truck on and you, know, you have to build up the air pressure so you have to wait a little bit but the next one would be the parking brake test you're going to check the trailer parking brakes and the truck parking brakes so you're going to leave one engaged disengage the other one put the truck in and drive attempt to move forward and whichever one you you left engaged should hold you in place and that'll say hey the trailer brakes the trailer brakes uh parking brakes work hey the truck parking brakes work they're doing their job they're not letting me move so that's the parking brake test and then the um the last test is a service brake test which you disengage the parking brakes put the truck and drive you go forward five miles an hour, hit the service brake. Obviously, the brake pedal should stop you. Um, so you're just making sure your service brake works. And that's all the leak and brake test is. Static leak, applied leak, low air pressure warning, emergency spring brake, parking brake, service brake. And that's it. It's. It might be, seem intimidating when you're first looking at your instructor going over it as he tell, shows you how everything is. Um, but it's not. It's it's real easy. It's real simple. I don't know why so many people mess up more on the end cab and the leak and brake test than they do on the outside pre-trip. Because I find it a lot easier. Um, but a lot more people get this stuff wrong than they do on the outside. So, at least what we've been told. Um, but that's it. That's a. Uh, that's the components for the outside pre-trip and the end cab and uh, leak leaking brake test. Uh, again, I just went over what's what's on it. I didn't like go in detail or anything like that. So uh, that's that's for your instructor to do and everything. Because I don't want to show y'all how I was taught or how we do it, and then you go somewhere different and your instructor teaches you something completely different. So I don't. I'm not an instructor. I don't, I'm not perfect at this. I don't want to show anybody on here uh, how to do something, you know, right now. Um, I'm going to leave that up for your instructor. I'm just showing you the components that you're going to be looking for on it and everything. All right. Y'all have a good one.